This is Keith. Keith believes that fooling around at parties, kissing different girls at nightclubs, and even losing his virginity is no big deal. This is why he is wrong. You see, we've been deceived into believing it's just a casual hookup, but the reality is there's never a clean tear. In fact, a part of that person will always remain with you, and a part of you will always remain with that person. Let me introduce you to one of the most wicked men in the Bible, a man called Ammon. Now, Ammon was the king's son, but he had a total obsession for another woman who lived in the palace, a woman called Tamar. But this obsession, it wasn't pure, it wasn't wholesome like Romeo and Juliet. No, it was filthy, it was wicked, it was corrupt. And because Ammon dwelt on this fantasy day after day, eventually it unhinged his mind and made him very ill. One of his friends, a man called Jonadab, now the Bible says that Jonadab was a crafty man. Jonadab said to his friend Ammon, what is wrong with you? I've noticed you're losing weight, tell me what is eating you up? And so Ammon told him his obsession. He told him all of his heart. So Jonadab said, don't worry about it. We can sort it out. Here is my scheme that I've conjured up. What you need to do is you need to go to your bed and you need to pretend that you're very sick. Then send for the king and say to the king, I want you to send Tamar to me. Ask her to prepare a meal for me and let her feed me with her very hand. Ammon followed the deceptive scheme precisely, and so he faked his own illness. He called for the king and said, would you send Tamar to me to feed me with her very hand? Tamar obeyed the king's wishes and came in with a batch full of cakes that she'd baked herself. At first, Ammon said, I refuse to eat these cakes until everyone else is out of the room. So again, the servants obeyed and they left Tamar and Ammon totally alone. Once they were alone, Ammon said, come, Tamar, come, feed me with your very hand. And so Tamar began to walk over to Ammon. As she got closer, Ammon grabbed her and said, come lie with me, come lie with me, Tamar. And Tamar cried out at the top of her voice, no, do not do such a disgraceful thing. If you do this, you would bring shame on us for the rest of our lives. But the sad reality is this, once sexual sin has been ignited, it does not listen to reason. It is blind to all the consequences, is all it cares about is getting its fill then. And this one act, this very act that Ammon was about to do, would ruin the rest of his life. But he did not care because he was filled with filthy desire. You can probably imagine what happened next. Because Ammon was bigger, because he was stronger, he forced himself on Tamar and stole the one thing that was precious to her, her virginity. But my dear friends, there is something which makes this story even more disturbing and it's this. Tamar was Ammon's sister. Look, why do I tell you about Ammon and Tamar? I do it to remind you that when you commit sexual sin, three things die. The Bible says, then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. The first thing to die was Ammon and Tamar's relationship. I mean, think about it. How could they go back to any sense of normality as brother and sister after what Ammon had done? And yet, to this very day, what is the thing that the devil is using more than anything else to destroy the family home? He's using sexual sin. Sexual sin has blown so many families to pieces. You've got men and women who've committed adultery. The family home has been broken. You've got men and sometimes women in secret watching wrong, filthy things on the internet. And what has this done? It's created a barrier in the home, a coldness, a hardness in the heart. And the devil is rubbing his hands together, knowing that this one tool unlocks all of the pain and the trauma that goes on for generation after generation. John Owen said, be killing sin or it will kill you. And my question to you is, have you mastered the art of killing sin or are you letting sin kill you?
Now, I know the men who are watching this video right now, you are repulsed by this story of what Ammon did to Tamar. But can I say this? I believe many men in the 21st century resemble something of Ammon's character. Okay, they wouldn't go to these great, horrific lengths that he went to to get what he wanted. But I do believe that many men do go to great lengths and they will even manipulate women to get what they want. How many times have you heard a woman, a girl say this? He told me he loved me. And as soon as he got what he wanted, he dumped me and would have nothing to do with me anymore. My dear friends, the sad reality is many men use love as a way to access a woman's body, but many women use their bodies as a way to access a man's heart. And you know as well as I do that that is not the way God designed it. God created this oneness, this intimacy, as a precious gift, and it is a beautiful thing to be one flesh with another person. But the only place this intimacy can flourish is within the walls of marriage. Hey, let's go back to our story. The moment that Ammon achieved his fantasy is the same moment that, oddly enough, he grew very, very angry. You see, in his mind, he pictured this fantasy. He played it out in his mind over and over again. But the reality was very, very different to what he'd been thinking over in his mind. So what did he do? He grew bitter and angry with Tamar. He was actually repulsed by her and threw her out of his sight. He bolted the door and said, I want nothing to do with you and left that poor girl out there totally ashamed and totally broken. That's what sin does. It spins this lie, this exaggerated, emphatic, massive, huge, big, juicy pleasure. And yet when we experience it, it leaves us rather flat and rather empty. I wonder, are you addicted to watching in pure images on the internet. Did you know this? Psychology tells us those people who spend the most time addicted to watching these things on their phone, on their computer, those same people are the most irritable people in life and often have a short fuse because they've become so selfish and so self-centered. So here's a gentle warning to the unmarried. If you believe that sleeping with your boyfriend or girlfriend will make them love you more, will make your relationship go up to the next level, I want to tell you something. It will probably kill the relationship because very often when we introduce things into our relationships which should only be introduced in the walls of marriage it very often makes one of the people run a million miles away because it did not play out the way they imagined it and maybe just maybe there's someone watching and they're confused why has he stopped texting me why has he shut me out of his life why has he dumped me why has he blocked me on social media or perhaps this might just be the reason why the second thing which sexual sin kills is it kills your reputation do you remember how i told you that ammon was the king's son well one day ammon had the right to sit on the throne of david he had the right to be king over israel and who knows in biblical history history, we might have known him as a mighty man of valour, one of the great kings. But instead, what was his destiny? Instead, what life did he choose? He chose to be a fool and now everyone sees him as one of the most wicked men in all of the Bible. A number of years ago when I used to work in schools, there was a young man who was very gifted at teaching and he was so gifted in fact that he was going to get promoted. He was going to become one of the head teachers, one of the principals of the school. But this young man had a weakness. He loved running off with different women. He ran off with different women in the school. He went to parties and he put his pictures all over social media and everyone knew him that he loved the women. He loved the ladies. So how did the school react? Well, they simply could not trust him with this higher responsibility. And my dear friend, it's not just men who lose their reputation. Women also can lose their reputation. Okay, perhaps they're not hurt physically, but many women are hurt emotionally. There are many women who to this very day, years and years ago, they were scarred. Years and years ago, someone hurt them who they made themselves vulnerable to and they spread rumours about their body. In the locker room, they tore that woman's body to pieces and all of the men, all of the friends laughed about it. Perhaps more recently, they saw a picture of you and they sent it around the whole of the school or around all of their friendship group and you were totally ashamed. My dear friends, it's not true the rhyme that goes like this. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. Listen guys, you can break your leg and it'll one day heal. But if someone breaks your heart, very rarely 
Does it actually heal? Okay, we move on from the pain, but the scar still remains. And the third thing to die is you. Two years later, Amon is drunk in the palace. Again, he's showing that he's a man who lacks self-control. He wasn't a man who could have one or two drinks. No, he had to drink the whole bottle. Tamar's brother, a man called Absalom, was very, very angry at what Amon did those two years previous. So he had his servants come and seek revenge. So while this man was staggering around drunk, Absalom had Ammon struck down and killed. And that brings us to Tamar. Although she was totally innocent in this, she suffered because of Ammon's sin. And although she did not die physically, she died inside. The Bible says she put ashes on her head and she walked across the palace mourning for her virginity that now she was no longer like the daughters of Israel. But what about you? What about me? Well, I believe the Bible teaches this. For the man or woman who refuses to repent from sexual sin. I'm not talking about making mistakes. I'm not talking about falling into sin occasionally. I'm talking about a lifestyle where this person is saying, I'm having this sin. I'll have God as well, but I want this sin. I want this sin and I will not let go of it, no matter how much I am told to repent. Well, I think the Bible is clear. It says you might not die physically, but you will die spiritually. And there is a second death that awaits all of those who refuse to turn from their sins and would choose darkness rather than light. The book of Revelation says, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Does that sound harsh? I don't mean to sound harsh. I don't mean to sound like I'm hitting you over the head with a stick because the man looking at you right now is a dreadful sinner. And I believe I probably messed up a lot worse than many of you watching this video. But I just wanna tell you, though we may have lost our virginity, though we may have played the field, though we may have done shameful things that we're embarrassed of, the Lord can forgive us. And if we come to the cross, God can make us as pure as his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. About a year ago, I was preaching on the streets of England when a woman in her 60s told me, I want you to stop preaching. And she just would not let it go. She kept persisting that I must stop preaching. So eventually, I actually did. I stopped preaching. And I entered into a conversation with her. She told me what her occupation was. She was a lady of the night. And I really did do my best. I tried to show her the love of Christ. I tried to share the gospel, but it just seemed like there was this barrier, this stubbornness, and I couldn't break through. At points, there was points where I broke through. I remember once we were talking about her grandchildren, and I said, I'm sure your grandchildren love you to pieces and a tenderness filled her eyes. But then the next moment, again, she was angry, she was aggressive. As I left the conversation, I went away feeling very discouraged, thinking, there's a lost person, and have I really told her about the Saviour? Have I really shown her that this great big God sent his son to bleed and die on a cross to save her? So I said to my friend, who is an experienced evangelist, what would you do instead? What would you say instead? This is what he said. I'd say this, Joe, tell her that Jesus can restore her dignity. My dear friend, I want to say the exact same thing to you. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter how many people you've been with, Jesus Christ can restore your dignity today. When he went to the cross, he took all of our shame, all of our impurity, all of our playing the field, all of the wrong things we've done, and on the cross, he suffered there. And that blood that was shed can wash away, can scrub away all of our sins. Just like if a man who's covered in dirt stands in a fast flowing river, he'll be washed clean. So the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ washes away all of our sins and makes us clean. And then, the precious Lord Jesus, who died, was buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. And that means that anyone who's had a terrible past, if they put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, they can be certain of one thing. They have a wonderful future in him. And my question to you is, have you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? Perhaps all you've known in your life is rejection. Perhaps all you've known in your life is people walking away from you and leaving you alone. Well, I want to point you to the man 
the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will always remain faithful and he will never leave you nor forsake you. So commit your life to him now and I promise you, although you'll let him down, I've let him down many times, he will never let you down. I must ask you this though, I wonder if you're watching this video now and you're in a relationship with an unbeliever or perhaps you just want to know more about dating as a Christian, if that's you, please click on this video now. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. We'd really appreciate your friendship here at Off The Curb Ministries. It's such a privilege to have you watching these videos every week and I do not take it for granted. God bless you all and thank you for watching.